everyone, in this one we're going to get all of the software that you need up and running uh, so that you can do not only this intro to Python course, but also my other course, which is going to be an introduction to the tools that we use in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, we're going to install two pieces of software in particular that are free. Uh, we're going to really just install it in one go, uh, but we're going to install uh, Anaconda and Jupyter Notebooks, and we're going to make sure that this is all running on Python 3. So uh, and this will be easy to do, no problem there. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about what Anaconda and Jupyter Notebooks actually are, why they're important, and why you want to use them. Turns out that if you have these skills in your back pocket, like you are, you know what Anaconda and Jupyter Notebooks are, um, you're going to find your job hunts if you're doing data science job hunts to be a lot easier because turns out that a lot of times people do actually sh uh, um, include um, Jupyter notebooks as a skill that is desirable to them. And really, we'll, we'll I'll tell you exactly what is going on with both of these pieces of software and why we want them. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time explaining why they're valuable, why I use them all the time. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some basic features. So we're going to navigate a Jupyter notebook and just kind of get your feet on the ground with what you're actually looking at, why it's doing what it's doing, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's move into our definitions. First and foremost, Jupyter, a Jupyter notebook, is an IDE for Python. What an IDE is, it's almost like um, an interactive shell. It's, the IDE says for integrated development environment, meaning it is almost like a lightweight piece of software that is designed to make it easier for you to code. Um, you might be familiar with things such as Sublime Text, which is a text editor that colors your code and all that kind of stuff that is a kind of IDE in some ways. But IDEs have a bunch of other special features and bells and whistles that exist that are not um, necessarily uh, just like a very simple plain text editor that colors your, colors your words. It does other things as well. So in particular, uh, Jupyter Notebooks are, uh, if you've ever heard of something called IPython, this is an older version of an IDE. Jupyter is like a version of IPython that they designed to work with your Chrome browser or your Firefox browser, Safari, whatever you, whatever your default browser is. So rather than having, you know, a, a, an application that you download and then you uh, call up and it has like all this weird stuff going on with it, it might not be properly updated, having like a lot of memory being used just to create a container to visualize this stuff to like put your code in it just hijacks the architecture that already exists in your browser and runs it through that one thing i will mention to you is that once we get to that point uh, once we create our Jupyter notebook it, even though you're in a browser you're not going to be on the internet at all so you're writing code this isn't on a website somewhere even though it's going to be in a website browser uh, and I'll spend more time talking about what's going on with that. But basically, you're just using your internet browser as a way to interact with your code. Lastly, uh, Anaconda is a environment manager and package manager for Python and other languages. Basically, when you are building complex code, a lot of times you are going to have, you're going to use uh, libraries uh, almost like these are modules, these are pre-made code from other people to do a lot of your tasks. Um, it's very common, I, depending on how complex the task I'm doing is, I'm ha I have like dozens of libraries that I'm using. And even if I'm only using one library or one module, that module might actually call other modules. It might need a special function from somewhere else. And if you're dealing with all this stuff, you'll if you've ever dealt with this stuff, you'll very quickly realize that uh, the concept of dependencies becomes an issue. For example, if I have a library that I want to use and that library requires that I have another package called NumPy, it might require that I have NumPy from a very specific uh, release. Like it must be NumPy 3.0 or higher because that's when they introduced some important function that this package is gonna use. It is really difficult to keep up with all of the updates and all of the dependency issues that exist when you are building code like this. Um, for the stuff that you guys are do will be doing as an intro, you probably won't have to worry about this for a while in terms of 
you know, how it impacts you and your learning, but it is something that happens a lot and all the time and can potentially happen to you depending on what you're doing and really put you into a roadblock of like, okay, well, now I'm stuck. I almost feel like I have to reinstall Python in order to get this to work. So uh, in order to avoid those kind of headaches, um, we're going to have this thing called Anaconda as our backend. So we're going to download Anaconda, which comes pre pre-packaged with Jupyter Notebooks and Python 3, have that all downloaded, and so that when we are installing new packages for our next course, uh, we're going to do it all through Anaconda, and it's going to check dependencies and everything and make sure everything is up and running and good for us when we want to use a new package or a new thing. Okay guys, with that, let us move into our syntax section. We are going, this syntax section is not gonna have much in code, but it will have, we will get to a point where we're now looking at a code, like code blocks and like how to deal with a code editor. So we're gonna do some installation stuff. I'll spend a little bit more time, maybe try to convince you on why Jupyter Notebooks and Anaconda are great for data science. And, and then uh, that's basically where we're gonna end off. So let's move into that section now. Okay, guys, so first things first, this is the home page for Jupyter and Jupyter Notebooks. We're not going to download anything in particular here, but you don't even need to install it to have it to, to try it. Essentially, what is going on here is like you could you could play with Jupyter Notebook in your actual browser because it's going to pass through all the code for you. But if you install a notebook, none of this will ever get onto the onto the Internet. And what makes Jupyter Notebooks really nice is it's not only just like a useful way to organize your code when you're coding anyways. It's particularly useful for presenting your code and sharing your code uh, with many people. If you have a massive code base, I wouldn't probably recommend having your Python all be in Jupyter Notebooks if you have thousands and thousands of lines of code because that's just going to get hard to read. Um, but, you know, for like 99% of my daily tasks, I'm on a Jupyter Notebook. And that's because uh, it's easy to use. It has these nice little cell blocks so I can run blocks of code easily and quickly. Uh, it will render all of my visualizations in the, uh, in the output block of a cell block, which is very useful. And it's just really, really good for sharing. Um, uh, both for, I actually use Jupyter Notebooks when I present uh, code bases as well, because it's just that... Um, simple and intuitive. It's one of the more intuitive IDEs out there for Python at the moment. Um, we're not going to install this notebook. We're going to, uh, I, I wanted to just show you the website, what you can do. So it's not, it's used by everybody guys. Um, and you don't even need to use just Python. It's, it works with Spark, PHP, Visual Basic, C Sharp, Python, you name it. So it's, it's standard for a bunch of languages. So if you want to use Jupyter for something else, you like the way it works for Python, it will work for other things for you. But rather than downloading Jupyter Notebooks, uh, we're going to download Anaconda, which comes pre-packaged with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, this is free, so Anaconda is going to be our package manager. You know, see how it's like, oh, it's great for data scientists. So it already says it right off the bat. And we're really, we're not going to download the enterprise. We're really just going to download the, the straight free version. And I'll, I'll look, I'll go through it all with you. So remember, we want to be downloading the Python 3.7 version. Make sure you pick your proper uh, operating system. So if you're on Windows, use Windows, the Windows installer, Mac use the Mac installer and Linux respectively. I'm on a Mac guys. I'm going to be doing this entire course on a Mac. You don't really need to have, there's not going to be really much difference between how you run things on in a Jupyter notebook on a Mac versus a Windows machine. There might be some very, very slight differences with respect to pathing, like how you navigate to a file uh, across these two platforms, three platforms, but I wouldn't, otherwise you don't really need to worry too much about it. So download your proper installer. And once it's installed, you should have something like this Anaconda Navigator available to you. So if you run the Anaconda Navigator and pull it up, it's going to have something like this. If you have these, but if you have this Jupyter Notebook button, but it doesn't say launch, it says install, please do install it right now. Um, we're not going to use this navigator too much for building our code or, or for, for what we're doing. We really just wanted to download this Jupyter Notebook and have uh, this environments thing ready to go for us. So this is a user interface of 
uh, the package management system that's going on uh, in our navigator. You can have different environments. So you can say, okay, our base environment, you don't want all of these other other libraries because they're very, very large and will impact the speed of stuff. So you can build in a different environment that has like subsets of things in it. But regardless of all that, well, uh, what we're going to want to do, oh, I'm in a different environment right now. Let's go application space root. Um, regardless of all that, what we're going, we're not going to be using this interface for much anymore. We just wanted, I just, we wanted to have it downloaded. So it has Anaconda on your terminal and um, has the Jupyter Notebook already, and it will also install Python for you at the same time. So it was really to like download everything that you need in one click. When we're building code, uh, we're gonna make a Jupyter Notebook. So in order to create a Jupyter Notebook, we can go right from our Anaconda Navigator thing here and press launch. And it's going to probably, yours might not have this warning associated with it, so don't worry, but you will notice that like a terminal popped up and that I'm now on this screen here. First thing you want to notice is um, your your address here. Yours should say localhost, probably 888 slash tree. What this is saying is that it's saying you're not on the internet. It's you are on your localhost, you're on your, everything that's being run right now is being run on your machine. 888 is representing that like, this is like a closed port. Uh, this is just for your local machine. This is not connecting to anyone else and that it's just a tree, a tree of all these files okay so technically at this point we have um turn on jupiter we haven't created a notebook yet though we can do that i'm going to go into my desktop i'm going to go into this folder here and i'm going to go all the way down to where i want to create my notebook find the file path and then in order to create the notebook all we need to do is press new, you might not have Python 2 here, but like find Python 3 and uh, click it and see what happens. So this is an empty Jupyter notebook. This is what we're going to use in order to run our code and do everything. Uh, in our next section, we're gonna spend a lot more, we're gonna spend time actually playing with this interface and showing you what's available to it. But wanted to get you to a point where you are a understanding that you're not on the internet even though it feels like you're on the internet so you can relax that you're not going to get viruses or anything from this and uh, get you all installed i want to show you a couple more things in a terminal uh, meaning like our command line uh, really quickly before moving into a recap though okay so at the moment guys i'm actually in a terminal in on a macintosh computer basically it's like your command line uh, you, if you are on a uh, Windows machine, maybe put in something like um, command prompt. Oh, clear work. Yeah, uh, that was just a, a command that you can use in this terminal. Anyway, the the point of me bringing up this terminal in the first place is to uh, show you um, two things. One, um, if you've installed Anaconda properly, if you call Conda. It should give you something like this. If it says it doesn't know what the the key is or whatever is going on, um, it errors basically, then make sure that your Anaconda uh, has been loaded and installed properly. Uh, basically, if you are going to install a package that we're going to use in a Jupyter Notebook, you want to be doing conda install and basically, Find where the pack. If you go on, if you Google like conda install the package, it will it will give you the command like the path that you need in order to find where the installation package is located. So you'll go like conda install this package uh, destination, and Con Anaconda will do everything for you. The other thing you can do is if you don't want to load that obnoxiously head, like big Anaconda navigator. Um, an Anaconda Navigator program, if you just want to create a Jupyter Notebook, um, navigate to where you want to be in your terminal. So I'm, I'm not going to do a class on bash and like all the commands that are going on here, but if you've never encountered a terminal before in Python or in, in Mac, this is what it looks like. I'm saying change directory. Uh, right now I'm in a home directory. So I want to go to that directory where uh, I'm, you know, I have my, kick, uh, we have this, all my class uh, files associated with it. So I'm going all the way into here. I'm listing the files that are available here. Okay, I changed directory into code. And now if I want to create my Jupyter Notebook in this folder, I just go Jupyter Notebook. It's going to populate a bunch of 
silly stuff here that is like probably don't need to worry too much about but this is going to stay running so you want to leave this terminal open and you'll notice here that it just populated a new notebook and it's all running here so just a handful of explanations of like a ways of um, installing python uh, why we're using jupyter notebooks why we're using anaconda and ways to like uh, navigate through without dealing with the the large uh, like using uh, Anaconda and, and Jupyter notebooks at the command line to just at least like load them up if you don't want to use that really large app. So with that, guys, let's do a recap. Okay, everyone. In this class, we installed our Jupyter and Anaconda software. I described why they're useful to you, showed you a little bit of their front page, and gave you a handful of tips and tricks to deal with, um, you know, creating new notebooks and installing in Anaconda. Um, hopefully, you see why it's useful from my explanation and from some demonstration. And um, I, I guarantee you, you'll be using Jupyter Notebooks. If you continue a career in data science, you will probably use a Jupyter Notebook sooner rather than later. So I'm happy you at least know what it is, have it installed. Um, so with that, guys, thank you very much.